when a relationship is intact, it's a little bit different than when it's going down the slide of towards a divorce. But here, oftentimes, putting up cameras or tracking cars, if the relationship's working, isn't necessarily seen as a bad thing. Absolutely. But once you're going through that breakup phase, I think there's a fine line because if you believe somebody's cheating on you, you want to have solid proof. So I think that's a lot of times where you see trackers coming in. Mm. But I've also seen it as a basis in order to obtain restraining orders. Oftentimes is that the other spouse is tracking them. It's an invasion of privacy. Oh, really? So I, I just want to make sure that whoever's mm. watching this, make sure you're aware of what you're tracking and how that can affect you. Especially in Massachusetts, I have seen the fact that you're invading somebody's privacy, that you're recording them, that you're putting trackers on a car. There could be a legitimate reason for it. It could be, I believe they're cheating. They're telling me they're not. You know, I want to know whether my marriage is working or not. What I usually tell people is this is really a therapy issue, not a tracking issue because trackers can lead towards restraining orders. And the court doesn't look at the history back and say, well, five years ago when you established it, it was for the right reasons. Unfortunately, our court system sucks yes, it and does. it all depends on what judge you're in front of. So you could end up in a judge who is more open to the fact that, okay, well, I understand why you did what you did. And then you might end up in front of another judge that says, no, if you're tracking yourself, that it is an invasion of privacy, regardless of any other reason. That's where the law here just isn't just because it is so dependent on who you end up in front of. But it's definitely something I've seen over and over and over again.